There's a lot of steps to building a smart home, and sometimes we only focus on the final outcome. But guess what? If your foundation is incorrect, then you're not gonna have a reliable smart home. Today, let's talk about wiring. Let's talk about the 10 biggest mistakes that people make when pre-wiring their smart home. And number one is using cheap cables. Come in here and let's talk about it. Let's talk about cabling because majority of your house is either going to be wired with cat cabling or some kind of two or four conductor wire. Why do I say cat? Because there's cat5, there's cat5e, there's cat6, there's cat6a. There's different types of cat cable whenever it comes to this cable. This cable is going to be used for ethernet, for cameras, for audio and video. So you want to future proof. Make sure that you're at a minimum running cat six cabling. And if some of these are long runs, don't use cheap cable. Why? Because there's actually true copper cable and then there's copper shielded cable. For some of those longer runs, you do not want to skip out on your cable because it will not be reliable and you will run into some issues. When it comes to speaker wire, please make sure to use shielded speaker wire. At minimum, a 16 gauge. 16 gauge is what's going to give you, or at least give you the option to power majority of amplifiers and speakers. So having a shielded speaker wire and CAT6 cabling is going to help for you to have a smart home. Let's go to number two. Mistake number two, conduit, future proven your household. Make sure that you are running conduit at least from the exterior of the house into your attic and then from there, preferably into the rack. But this is a piece of equipment. Didn't mean to hit myself there. This is a piece of equipment that a lot of people make a mistake and don't wire. If you do not run conduit, you will not be able to add future fiber, future lines, future anything into the household. But not only on the exterior, let's take a look at a living room. Conduit, this is used for future wiring, whether it's an HDMI, whether it's a service line. Running conduit for your service line and in fireplaces where you may have a future HDMI going from your television into a cabinet is going to be extremely critical for a successful smart home or a TV installation. So there goes tip number two. Let's go to number three. I brought you back over here for number three and number four because number three is bad cable management. Now keep in mind this is not completed, but we still made a big effort to make sure that all of our cables we're neatly managed and dressed up, not just so we can protect them, but so we can also install them and set them up in the future. So number three, make sure that you have clean cable management. And number four, the placement of your structure can. That is a big one. In this scenario, we're gonna have a lot of audio, a lot of video, cameras, security, POE, switches. There's gonna be a big rack that's gonna fit in here. So placement of this is extremely important. You do not wanna put this in a laundry closet. You do not want to put this in the master bedroom, especially if you're going to have a lot of equipment. Smaller structure cans for security and network, you can get away with those um, in a random place to where you can actually put a cover on this and keep everything inside. But if you're going to have a smart home that's going to have a rack, keep in mind that majority of the racks are going to have a 22 inch by 22 inch radius. So um, fitting those in here uh, is important. Placement of this is important. That's number four. Let's go to number five. Number five, not pre-wiring for future audio zones. This scenario, this is our game room. We actually pre-wired for a 5.1 surround sound and we still have our blank plates in the ceiling. We actually came by yesterday and started some of the trim out work. So you'll notice that there's some speakers that are already installed, but there's certain rooms that we did not want to do as part of phase one but there is a possibility of adding it in the future. So making sure that you have extra audio zones uh, for future proven is extremely important. Here's number six. Number six, let's talk about bass. A true surround sound is going to have a low frequency speaker. So make sure that you wire for a subwoofer, whether it's an RG6 or a two conductor speaker wire for an in-wall subwoofer, make sure that you're adding a subwoofer. Even if you're not a big bass person, Eventually, you may want to add it or for future proving your home whenever you sell it, make sure that you're adding a surround sound. I mean, a subwoofer to at least every surround sound. And do keep in mind that there's certain areas where a two channel sound system can be improved without a subwoofer. So your patio, your kitchen, your master bedroom, 
add a subwoofer in there as well. Number seven, do not ignore your outdoor areas. Not just with audio, but Wi-Fi. A lot of people skip out on the cat cable in the patio, but keep in mind that nowadays everything runs on Wi-Fi. So a perfect example, we have a Cat6 cable hanging from the ceiling for a future access point. We're going to be adding an outdoor rated access point. So we have Wi-Fi out here. So places where you wanna run a little extra cable is in the patio and the garage. Number eight, which should have been number one in its proper preparation, whether it is with a floor plan and a pencil or at some kind of software, draw out your system. Make sure to draw out every speaker, every TV, every camera, every access point, every entry point. This will give you a true overview of what the home is going to be. Then you can transfer that into an actual software, give it to your pre-wiring guys or your AV guys. And at that point, you'll know what's being installed. They'll know what's being installed and there'll be no questions in the future. For number nine, number nine, 2.0, we're gonna be back in the rag closet because there's two things that I wanna highlight. Number one is labeling making sure that every single line in the house is labeled, whether it's at the trim out stage or the wiring stage. And number two, I don't have a way to show you this, but these lines should never cross a high voltage line. Keep that in mind. Keep them very, very, very separated because this is gonna transfer data, audio, video. When it comes to high voltage, if it's too close to this, it will cause interference. Number 10, and before we go on number 10, subscribe to the channel. These projects, these videos take a lot of work. A subscribe, a like, doesn't cost you anything and it makes us happy. So hit that button, share with a friend, hoping to add in some value to your smart homes. Thank you for watching. Let's go to number 10. So we've discussed a lot. We've discussed location, what type of wires to run, conduit, future placement, future proven. We discussed all of these things and I hope that you wrote them down. But number 10 is the most important one. The mistake that you do not wanna make is not call us. That's what we do guys, you're supposed to call us. I'm just kidding guys, number 10. Make sure that you take pictures of your house. Once the home is wired, take your pictures, take your videos. This is going to future proof any issues that you may have. There's a lot of people working in this house. There's sheet rockers, there's cabin trips, people, there's electricians, things are tend to happen. A cable may get covered up and if you have some pictures, you can backtrack it. Well, there you go. That's how you build a smart home or at least that's how you wire a smart home. If you need one, contact us, we're here to help. Don't forget to look, listen, and live with us. I'll see you on the next one.